Uh, TLC or the Land Conservancy of British Columbia is a charitable land trust operating throughout the province. Uh, our mission is to protect and restore the biological diversity of BC for present and future generations and through action and education. In the Clearwater River Valley, we protect 141 acres of wetlands, forests, and meadow. Our first uh, Deer Trails Naturalist program was launched in 2019 in the Valley. And this year at our session will be held August 30th to September 6th. This year our program will feature Malia Acker, Nancy Flood, and Nancy Turner. So to tell us more about the session, we have three instructors here with us today. Uh, Lynn Baldwin, Trevor Goward, and Bryony Penn. What is place and why Wells Gray? Place, as I like to define it, is, is the intersection of geography with meaning. And the problem we have um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a culture, um, as, a, as a Western civilization, is that our culture is a culture of more. Uh, what we need to get to is a place where we are become a culture of, of, of enough. And we can, we can maintain this, this, um, this, this emphasis on more, so long as we sort of levitate above place, so long as we sort of occupy, as it were, the world in our imaginations. But that's not really where we live. We really live in, in a geographic space, which we might define as an apartment, um, uh, um, building or as a um, as a suburban um, lot or 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 even even broader as a, as a town as a community as a country but the fact is that so long as we as we want more <clears throat> of the world than the world can give us we're actually not standing in place and i think that the way to find our our to, to get our feet onto the ground is really to engage in a particular geographic space to learn how to do this rather um, and and in the process of that find find meaning not just in the place but in our own lives to find a, a direction and and uh, well to really to do the impossible to, to find a reason and to to strive in a time when all reasons to strive to strive seem to have been taken from us i believe that this is possible and i believe that this is what what we want to do at deer trails why is place important? I'm trained as a pl uh, quantitative plant ecologist, but several years ago, um, I began to understand that the needs of the world required uh, more than just science, that science was necessary, but not sufficient. And I was hugely um, influenced by Tom King's um, statement um, uh, in, the, in his book, The Truth About Stories. And he says, if you want a different ethic, tell a different story. And so that started to make me think about what story I was telling with my conservation work. And it's an important story, but I didn't feel like it was the, the full story that needed to be told. And as part of that, um, I think that many of us, not all of us, but many of us, especially those of us um, descended from settlers, um, live with an ethic, um, and I'm going to quote uh, Marvin Lee Mueller, who's a Scandinavian philosopher, and he, when he was trying to think about what is the ethic that most of the um, settler descendants live with, he described it as a story of disembodied minds in permanent exile, attempting, all, attempting to dominate all that is perceived as other. So I have this need of the world, for us to care in ways that we don't seem to really evidence. I have this sense that the ethic that we approach the world with is really um, as though we're still in exile. And for me, the more I read, the more I understood is that place is not just a container in which our lives unfold, but if we allow it, place works on us um, and and shapes how we think about the world. And when we when we give space for place and we get to actually know place on an intimate level, which is often interrupted by our, the mobility that our society calls for, demands of, so especially if you take on professional roles as I did becoming an academic. It felt like I was constantly being asked to um, uh, 
disrupt the bonds that I was developing with place. So why place? Why do we, um, why do I think there's value in a workshop embedded in place is because it's for many of us, it is the thing we have forgotten to honor and treasure as we have developed in our lives as inhabitants of this earth. What motivates you to be involved in this workshop? I've also come from a historical perspective of late, um, uh, short history and deep history, having just spent the last <clears throat> many years um, writing biographies of uh, both in, uh, knowledge keepers of indigenous science and, and knowledge keepers of Western science. And I certainly see um, hardly any difference in the spirit of people that are very embedded in place. And, and I love the commonality. And, and that's, I think, the place that, that we, 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 we can begin and feel that there is a safe tradition <laughs> of being a naturalist. My teachings has always been, you know, to be a, a good human being, especially as you get older, um, you become a mentor. That is, I turned 60 this year, and I can't think of anything better than spending time with uh, multi-generational people, uh, um, uh, you know, like a group of, uh, of mixed generations and sharing knowledge. Um, every, every experience out, out with, with a group of people that want to be there is such a joy. We all come back from these weeks just so sort of um, happy and grounded and um, able to cope with all the craziness that this system throws at us. So why do I want to do this? Because it makes me feel good. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this partly, well, because I'm an elder now as well. And I guess, you know, when, at some point you've earned your, uh, you've, you've earned your scars and, and it's time to sort of just talk about it. But, but also because I, I have great, to be entirely candid, great sadness for, you know, young people, as somebody who spent the past 30 some odd years studying a place very carefully from many aspects, I see the change taking, unfolding as it unfolds. And, you know, if, if you know, anybody who's, who attends the workshop this, um, this uh, August, you'll have occasion to see some of the, some of the real things that are going on in the world. And I think it'll, it'll uh, give you, give you a sense, um, that um, that things are not well in hand. I think on the contrary, that things are going um, to be, um, as uh, Leonard Cohen says, um, um, falling off in all directions. And uh, when you think of when you think of, of 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 the world in a simplistic arithmetic sense, you say you know one plus one plus one plus one, and you can get five or whatever the number is. But when you start to move into ecosystems and biological systems, including Gaia itself, um, things don't work like that. You, there, are, there, are, there are surprises um, at, every, at every step. And the one thing that science cannot do, and I would claim will never do, is to be able to predict what comes next. So we're entering very really into a very deep and I think quite a dark time. And part of what I want to try to help young people to do is to, is to, is to find their way your way to uh, to a lifestyle that 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 will adapt to what's coming, be adaptable to what's coming, and and take a sufficiently broad perspective, not to be not to be, you know, um, um, not to become too too dark about it. I mean, it's it's a funny thing to say, but to get to get to the light, you have to go through some dark. If you don't see it. Um, without, without the dark, the Leonard Cohen again has a wonderful little saying. He says in one of his songs that, you know, the <clears throat> the crack is where the light gets through, and uh, but you've got to you've got to walk through this little bit of darkness to 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 begin to appreciate the light for what it is. The light is the real hope. What will dirt trails look like day to day? We are really trying to encourage. Um, different forms of expression so that this is both a qualitative and quantitative way of, of uh, observing, learning, connecting, 
all of us um, have been connected with universities, but we also have our own different expressions, whether it's poetry or art or writing, uh, journaling. Lynn and I both do a lot of journaling. And uh, it's a wonderful to see the next generation um, take on that, that skill set, but just because it it provides another way of seeing and a way of slowing down and a way of observing and a way of recording. We've got Nancy doing her, you know, storytelling of all the elders that she's interviewed over the years. We've got often visitors dropping in. We've got poetry classes um, with inspiration where we do, we're walking and we're learning to uh, with, with Malaya Acker. We've got volcanicity and learning to read landscape. Um, Trevor is always going to be, he's the, the master of all, every species on that uh, and their interrelationship. So it's, there's, it's lots of different types of learning. And then we have these great meals and then we fall into bed at, I don't know, it's usually late, except people want to look at the stars because they're so beautiful there. And um, we always have a fire. Uh, the days are long, you get tired, we're doing hikes. Um, and they're varied and we'll have laughs and tears. And um, I think we'll make, a, and there's also a lot of downtime for friendships and, and one's own solo time just to be out there. What do you hope participants will take from the workshop? Uh, I have a history of going up and teaching at um, in the Upper Clearwater Valley in Wells Gray. And for me, um, do, experiencing that place was nothing less than transformative because it was in this place that I really began to feel like I had the power to question the assumptions that had drawn that had driven much of my adult life and career and so what I feel like Deer Trails does is it carves out a space where people can question all that they've taken for granted and and know that they're questioning in a community um, that is open and receptive to those questions. Um, and I just got lucky that my job took me there year after year after year. But I have in my field journal, the, the notes that I made that I really began to question much of what I had taken for granted. So I think that um, there, there's tools that you take away. There's, there's a way of looking at the world. But I think more than anything else, there's the confidence to question that which is given.